Hey everyone, ever since the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition, Suede, has been out, there is this concept of community content where small publishers, individuals, others can provide content uh, and sell it through drive through RPG. Um, lots of different stuff, and I'm going to talk about what you can find in Swag and what kinds of things can you find for a buck. It's a savage world. Strange as a weird world. It's a savage world. Classics to explore. Hey everyone, it's Carl again with Tabletop Tango. Look at the bubbles, do the stuff, um, love you to contact, support, all that good stuff. So what do I want to talk about? So what I want to talk about today is swag, the Savage Worlds Adventure Guild. Um, what that allows is, again, small publishers, individuals, um, you know, pretty much anyone to use the swag license to publish material on DriveThruRPG and sell it or give it away. It's totally up to you. And Pinnacle allows it. It's, you know, officially licensed. Um, so what kind of things can you find in Swag if you're not familiar with it? Um, there's things like new classes of types of things or archetypes. I mean, I myself created a new arcane background called a Nanomage, which you can get um, there if you want. And it's more post-apocalyptic where you have little nanomachines, and that's what provides you that, um, you know, those powers. Uh, you also find adventures. Uh, lots of them. So people do one sheets, they do more complicated adventures. I myself, I put up something called the Helix Nebula situation, which is, I don't know, 20 pages or so. And it provides everything you need to run one of my con adventures um, for your group. You know, it has uh, maps, it has uh, pregens, all that kind of stuff. So I get a little more in. A lot of people put together, you know, for a couple bucks, a uh, one pager or a Savage Tales kind of thing. So that's available there too. You'll find kind of mini settings, um, for example, sh uh, Sprawl Runners, which is something that gives you the flavor of the Shadow Run, and I think it's like five bucks, but it provides a whole set of rules around doing um, cyberpunk in Savage Worlds. Uh, you'll, there's also the, I think, uh, Teenage Sewer Ninjas or something along those lines, which obviously kind of provides that flavor for if you want to do a Ninja Turtles kind of thing. I'm assuming I haven't bought it, but it's pretty inexpensive too, of all things saying. So you can find that too. Um, obviously there's creatures, so people publish things that provide um, interesting uh, you know, creatures, design, that sort of thing. For example, there's um, a, 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 swag, a swag product on dinosaurs that provides stats out dinosaurs and all that sorts of interesting stuff. You also find um, like somebody put out something about like kind of modern monsters or mythical monsters and that sort of thing. Um, and that you can use those from your stats and take advantage of them in your game. Um, you also find uh, things that define new setting tweaks, uh, you know, uh, setting rules or modify rules or augment rules. Um, and I'll talk, that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today because a lot of those are kind of in that buck category. Give me a buck and I'll, and I'll give you a little bit of insight in how I play my game kind of. Uh, there's play aids, like you'll find people who've done um, sheets that make it easier to track your monsters. You'll find people who've done new character sheets that they think are better because they got a different view and all that sorts of things. So that's a lot of stuff that you can find from the community. And just like everything, some of it's great, some of it's not. But for what I'm going to talk about for a buck, it's hard to go wrong. And so what I want to talk about right now is I'm going to go through a few. And they're not they were kind of popular at the time I recorded this. They're not necessarily, you know, the the, the legendary latest and greatest, you know, one awards. I, I didn't really care. I went and I said, hey, I've got a couple bucks to spend. Let's go look at the community content. What's kind of popular now? What kind of catches my eye? What might be something I go, hey, cool, I'd want to use that, and then take a look at it. And so what I'll look at is I'm going to look at was something called Modern Traps and Obstacles, Furious Magic, um, Tales from the Trek, Creature Generator and Artificer's Codex. So let's go through those one at a time. So um, in no particular order, because I'm just going to grab them as I see them on my desktop here. So, and I also want to say, I am not going to show, um, put these up in the screen because they tend to be small. Uh, another thing about swag stuff is it's usually a couple of pages. Now, some of the mini settings might be longer for, 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 for sure. Um, but some of these rule supplements are pretty small. It might be two pages, might be three to five pages. And so for me to put it up or to read some things verbatim, 
I'm, in, I'm giving away a lot of the content and they're only a dollar. So it sounds pretty interesting. It's a buck. So buy it, read it yourself, and then you'll have it. So let's start with Artificer's Codex. Now, this is a supplement that kind of augments the way uh, the crafting system in Suede um, works, um, you know, for, uh, you know, creating items and, you know, imbuing them with PowerPoints. And this one adds a bunch of rules on how to do things. It talks about how to make more of, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Uh, more of legendary type creature uh, things like major artifacts and that sort of thing. It has a little sidebar that talks about alternate ways of getting PowerPoints because that's always a big deal, right? It's like, why would I create a thing for someone else? Like, why would potions exist if I have to put my PowerPoints in them and then they're just going to go found in a treasure chest somewhere? Yeah, it doesn't make sense, right? That's always one of the things that gets discussed a lot um, when people are debating, you know, uh, creating items in Savage Worlds. But they add some rules around that to make that uh, something that you can do. And it's about two pages, literally two pages. And it says, well, here's what these artifacts might look like. Here's some ways of handling PowerPoints. Here's how we price them. Nice little package to maybe make things a little easier for when you're doing that. Then the next one is Creature Generator. So this one is not a rules edition, which the first one was. This one now adds some flavor. It provides some flavor. This one provides tables that let you roll on or randomize through and come up with some little pieces of what makes a monster. And then you can build around this. So for example, so it has tables where you can define type. You can roll and you find out it's a construct. You find out it's a land creature. Um, you can roll to find out what its sentience is. You know, is it, you know, a nice creature and, and you know, uh, can think, or is it more animalistic? Um, randomize pace, randomize those special abilities that we know are already in the book that you can pick out. And then um, also kind of random, is it an extra or is it a, um, you know, full creature? And so it provides a number of tables and it's even got a character sheet to make it easy. And then those tables help you kind of build out a monster quick with just some rolls. And then you can use that to kind of drive your imagination to kind of flesh it out, make it your own. Um, and it's interesting. It's some tables. It's got somebody's thought through how they would make, do this. Again, it's a buck. Um, so what other things did I grab? So then I have Tales from the Trek. Now this one is, again, two pages. But the idea around this is to add some additional framework around travel, um, a trek. Um, and so uh, goes a little bit beyond this, the concept of we had interludes, right? It talks about, are there difficult treks? Are there dangerous treks? What happens? Um, you know, with some of the roles to say how things are going, what if you had a critical failure while you're on a difficult trek? And here you get a wound. It talks about how modifiers, you know, healing, what all this stuff means and how it packages together. And it might be very exciting for a player who's kind of that outdoorsman who wants a little more meat around the survival roles or what have you as we're telling a tale, you know, interludes and et cetera, as we're traveling through the countryside. And it's a buck. Uh, then we also have Furious Magic. So we have another rules kind of supplement, something that adds to rules. And what this one does is says, um, how do we change the concept of spell casting? So a different way of, you know, not, not the traditional PowerPoints in the sense and not the no PowerPoints rule, something different. And I think the idea was behind this is how do you do something where simple stuff is kind of a given, right? It's a simple spell, no modifiers. But then when you start adding modifiers, now you have a chance of failure. So simple stuff very little chance of failure as you're making it more difficult as you're weaving things, you know, adding range, adding armor piercing, adding, now it becomes more difficult and there's a chance for failure. Um, and there's a chance for what they call um, drain, um, which takes as a level of fatigue based on failure. So it adds some rules and a different way of handling casting. And this might be much more interesting to your campaign if um, you do want, you know, wizards to be able to throw out, you know, 
cantrips, <laughs> they're not really cantrips, but wants to be able to throw out spells and feel confident that they're not going to fail to do it more than maybe the core rules. But then if they're pushing their boundaries, bad things can happen. And again, it, it's an alternate way of handling that. And it adds to, well, you know, changes some of the power lists and changes some of this other stuff. So major changes that you can then leverage. And it's only five pages long. And it's a buck. So it's, it was pretty cool to take a look at that. Um, so what else did we have? So and then the last thing I had was modern traps and obstacles. And that one is, again, something that you can use to add flavor to your game. So we saw there's a couple of rules changes and additions. There's a, now there's a couple of flavor things. And so modern traps and obstacles plays into when you're doing things like a dramatic task or you're doing you know, maybe in a quick encounter. And so we always talk about like, there's a dramatic task where you're doing a heist or something and you want to add some flavor because, you know, you're breaking into the Citadel or, or you're breaking into the, you know, the corporate offices. What are some of the things you might run into from a modern setting that now you have to overcome and that becomes flavor. And so all they provide, and, I, and all, I don't mean that in a negative, but what they're providing is a set of tables where you deal a card. Like for example, if you have, um, you know, a social interaction because um, you get a hearts and it's a it's a jack of hearts. It means that there might be an enemy team that you're running into. So now you can use that flavor to actually turn it into something that happens or during a dramatic task, you can use that to add <clears throat> to add like penalties or kind of help define the skill they might use. There's so many cool things you can use just by flipping some cards. Um, can you come up with these tables yourself? Probably if you thought through it, but here's a buck. Somebody's done the work has thought about it and, you know, it's made something interesting. Uh, so Modern Traps, Furious Magic, Tales from the Trek, Creature Generator, and the Artificial Codex are all examples of stuff I got for a buck. Um, rules, flavor, um, you know, just adding on to the system little things you can pull in and use, and it's really inexpensive. Your mileage may vary. Again, it's a community thing, so there could be a lot of stuff that's not great, a lot of stuff that's awesome, but for a buck, sometimes you just take a risk because for that dollar, it might be something that's really useful for your campaign. And it's a sheet you can hand out to your players and you don't have to explain it. You can say, here's how magic works. So anyway, I'm Carl. Thank you for watching. Uh, again, Tabletop Tango, look at the bubbles, do the stuff, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. It's a savage world. Strangers a weird world. It's a savage world. Bosses to explore. It's a savage world in the land of the dead.